A series of unfortunate events is a book series I have a lot of nostalgic and perplexing feelings on. Words here that mean I grew up with the series and lovingly awaited each book, and yet, like many others, found myself feeling extremely dissatisfied at the ending. But now when I look back on my time reading them, I don't regret the experience at all. In fact, if pressured, I would probably say it was one of my favorite series growing up. And if I had to do a review of a certain show adapting these books, I would write a Lemony Snicket-esque beginning in hopes that it would show how much I loved these books, even though they do leave a slight bitter taste in my mouth. So viewers, if you came here hoping for an absolutely glowing review of the new Netflix series, you're better off to exit this video now and turn your gaze to something more positive. Although I do have a lot of good things to say about the show, this video will mostly focus on some of the areas I was not as pleased with. Is this new adaptation better than the 2004 movie? Most assuredly, yes. To the movie's credit, though, there are a few things that I found myself missing while watching the Netflix series. The song that played at the beginning and end of the film always stuck to me as something so unabashedly a series of unfortunate events, and gave the film a mysterious edge that the Netflix show doesn't seem too keen on replicating, which is fair enough since the movie didn't do too well. While I do enjoy Neil Patrick Harris singing and telling us to look away as the opening for the show, it is strange for it to be coming from Count Olaf and definitely paints a more lighthearted kind of somber, akin to a Tim Burton-esque kind of dark atmosphere with silly antics. I'm not suggesting that they use the same song or even go this direction tonally, and obviously the show wasn't. It was going for a more lighthearted tone, but I do miss it. A few other things I missed from the movie in general was the air of mystery surrounding Lemony Snicket himself and some of the actors, actually, including the children and the actress for Aunt Josephine, but more on that later. I do overall really appreciate what this Netflix show has done. It has brought back this book series in a big way, and I don't think that should be underplayed. Netflix picking up these books so long after their conclusion took a lot of courage on their part, and with Daniel Handler as part of the creative team on this show, I don't doubt that the show will continue to do a great job and perform well with the Netflix audience while still making fans of the original books pretty happy and throwing in a lot of Easter eggs for them to find. It's been a good number of years since I read this entire series, so I definitely did not pick up on every little wink towards the books, but I did catch a good number of them per episode, and it's quite impressive. The set design and cinematography I also want to take a moment to praise because it was absolutely perfect in creating both a grim and saturated world that paralleled the tone of the story very well. A lot of the camera work focused on center frame shots that make you feel slightly uneasy, but at the same time look very picturesque. The art direction would purposefully clash at times, and while it's a bit jarring in the first episode, by the time you get to the end, it really feels like a natural part of the world they live in. And while I have complaints about some of the acting choices, I do love the deadpan humor and the times where the story takes itself seriously. There is some bone-chilling scenes that I give Netflix huge props for putting in there, like Klaus getting hit by Count Olaf, showing Uncle Monty's dead body, and of course, there's that oh-so-creepy line Count Olaf says to Klaus while gripping Violet's shoulder of, I'll touch whatever I want. Ugh! I don't remember that line being in the books, but damn if that wasn't effective. The mix of the mundane and the absurd in the books is also captured here quite well, and the way the adults are always brushing aside what the children say because it's either inconvenient or sounds too fantastical to be true is very much true to the books, even if I do question the direction of some of those elements at times. The actor who plays Uncle Monty is fantastic. I loved his performance, and he fit the role of his book counterpart to a T. And a lot of other actors here do a great job as well. The loyalty to the book text also helped and took away from the show, I think. The children suffer from it the worst, because their performance varies in quality a lot for me. And I think a lot of it is due to sticking to the book's dialogue, where the children are fairly monotone and don't have much of a personality outside their talents. This leads to some scenes in the show where their acting comes off as really bad, when I think it's more so a case of bad writing and direction. 
While I loved Warburton's performance as Snicket, I do sort of miss the air of mystery Jude Law's performance had in the movie, as that was more true to the books, where Snicket would only give little nuggets of information about himself that may have tied him into a greater conspiracy, and he never showed his face. I thought I would have a hard time disconnecting Warburton's voice from all the sillier roles I've seen him play, but he actually fell into the role exceptionally well. Someone who did not fall into their role exceptionally well for me, however, was Aunt Josephine. The mannerisms and general role she played in the story was good, and she stayed true to the books, but her line delivery was just... bad. And it wasn't bad all the time. Just most of the time. The scene where she and Captain Sham are flirting with each other while Count Olaf's crew stand in the background proclaiming what a great person Captain Sham is is probably one of my favorite comedic scenes from the show. But a lot of her general line delivery was just completely baffling to me, especially in the wide window part two, where nearly every line she says had me thinking, did they just shoot one take of this shot or what? I never felt like I was watching a person, but instead watching a performance and a bad one at that. This might also have something to do with the fact that I remember both book and movie Josephine leaving quite an impression on me as a really interesting character. Her brutal murder at the end of that book definitely perpetuated a fear of large bodies of water I didn't really have until reading that book. And I remember the actress in the movie doing a pretty good job of portraying Aunt Josephine's terrified nature while still keeping her likable and warm towards the children. The show tries to push the side of her character by saying that Aunt Josephine may have been a bad guardian and lacked the courage to do the right thing, but she was not a bad person. And without outright telegraphing this to the audience, I don't know if I would have felt anything about her death in the show, which is a far cry from how that death shook me quite a bit when I was reading it. Of course, this also plays into one of my other problems with the show. It's staging. Take the scene where Aunt Josephine dies, for example. In the book, Count Olaf brings the children onto his boat, and Josephine is left out onto the quickly sinking sailboat in Violet, Klaus, and Sunny. Listen to her scream as she slowly descends into the water while leeches tear into her. Like I said, it's pretty horrifying. In the show, however, Aunt Josephine gets on Olaf's boat and steps right in front of a part of the boat where there is no railing. Not only is it crystal clear what is going to happen to Aunt Josephine at this point because of this sloppy staging, but it also seems horribly out of character for Josephine to just be standing in such an obviously dangerous spot. Then, to add insult to injury, Neil Patrick Harris gives this doofy little one-finger push that just looks so lame and avoidable. I get that this show is going for a more comedic tone, but this whole setup and payoff was so poorly executed from start to finish. I'm not saying it needed to replicate the book, but it was just not convincing at all. And then there are similar staging issues and little acting choices that just annoy me to bits. Like another scene in the Miserable Mill episodes where Violet seriously just runs up to Count Olaf like she's a girl on a mission, and then Olaf just lightly grabs her shoulder and she's like... Well, I guess I've been caught. I'll just stand here now. The whole scene where the kids need to flee Aunt Josephine's falling house is also weird and goofy. Klaus backflips out of the Josephine-shaped hole and then sort of backflips back in, and Sunny went from being in a chair to suddenly grabbing the door with her teeth, but they so rarely have the baby move anywhere by herself that it seems sort of like a continuity break to have her suddenly somewhere else. And then the whole thing is just sort of slowly paced, considering that the kids are trying to flee the house. <sighs> it could use some work. That's all I'm trying to say. Neil Patrick Harris's Count Olaf took a while to grow on me. I'm surprised that they keep getting really charismatic and likable people to play this absolute scumbag of a human being. But if you want my thoughts on that whole situation, I highly recommend the Lost in Adaptation review by The Dom. Link below. However, Neil Patrick Harris's performance did grow on me, and by the end of season one, I was enjoying it quite a bit. That could also have to do with the fact that Olaf does become a bit more of a sillier villain throughout the books, so the more we watch, the more Harris's acting choices make sense. Now, while the show does a remarkable job of adapting the books, they have added quite a bit of extra... stuff. This stuff mostly centers around the secret society and setting them up earlier than the books do. 
If you're someone who has never read the books, then I'll let you know that the Secret Society was never mentioned or even hinted at until later books in the series. If you're someone like me who has read the books, you probably had a mini heart attack when these two showed up. I think around the middle of the fourth or fifth episode, I realized what direction they could go with it, and I don't think I've ever been happier that these children's parents were actually dead. (laughs) That sounds bad, but seriously, I like this red herring, but boy did it surprise me at first, and not in a good way. It does lead me to my one last complaint about the show, though. The acting. I talked about this a bit before, but I have a few more stray thoughts on the topic and I just want to get them off my chest. For starters, I don't think the acting is bad. It's obvious that the show was going for a bit more of a hammy and eccentric tone to counterbalance the melancholy of the situation that the orphans find themselves in. That is a perfectly reasonable approach to tackle these books from. I would have personally liked to see the show take itself a tad more seriously, especially considering the books never really talked down to its audience, and the themes of the books were pretty heavy considering the age group that this was aimed for. But while I'm a little disappointed the show didn't go down this route, I'm not surprised or even really hold it against them. It's the same way I won't be surprised if the Warriors movie takes that same kind of approach, because it's just way more marketable to an outside audience, and for most people it's more fun to watch. But man, if you're going to go for the hammy acting angle, please try and tread that line carefully. Most of the time, the show does it well. The Captain Champ scene I mentioned before was great. Olaf's lackeys get some good one-liners in. There's some great little winks at the audience making stabs at streaming video services and many other enjoyable scenes. But then there are other times where the scene just falls so flat and no one is giving a good performance, and then the scene just drags on and on. I recall one of the scenes in the Reptile Room episodes where Mr. Poe and the lackeys are talking and it's just painful to sit through, but I think I've done my best to forget about it because for the life of me, I couldn't tell you what was going on in that scene other than Poe was there and it lasted incredibly too long. If you truly want a great way to experience these books without reading them yourself, the show is a good way to go about it. Or even better, in my opinion, is Tim Curry's audiobooks for the whole series, which are phenomenal. I've only listened to the first book myself, but um, his reading and his like added performance of Count Olaf is just so good. While it might seem like my review of the show is plagued with a lot of negativity, my actual feelings about the show are pretty positive. By the end of season one, where the cast is all singing their final number together, I had really fallen for nearly everyone's performances. Any grievances I had with the actors seemed to sort of melt away during that final song. It just completely won me over and made me really excited to see a season two. While not the most beautifully sang song, it sold me to the idea of what this Netflix show is trying to do, and even made me feel a bit of that excitement I'd feel as a kid when I'd finish a book and have to wait until the next one would come out. I hope this show gets a good enough response to do the rest of the books, and I look forward to seeing what stays the same and what changes as they move forward. I'm also eager to hear what you guys thought. Have you read the books? What did you think of the show? Are you looking forward to a second season? Leave your thoughts below. I'm Simi, and I'll see you guys next time.